All right, Robin, welcome to the show. The Real Estate Mogul MD, are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Where you're at and, and what you've been doing. Yeah, well, uh, I'm retired military, so I don't know if you've had too many retired military on your show, but um, a little bit unique situation because we'd come into the service pretty young. I joined at 17, so we end up retiring in our early 40s, sometimes even late 30s, and then we're drawing on our retirement, getting our VA disability pretty young. So it gives us the opportunity for a second career. Um, my husband and I both serve, we're both retired. So um, whenever we go to places, like our kids are so still you know, in middle school and um, elementary school. So we're usually like kind of the older of the parents, but also when we say we're retired, they're like, what? <laughs> Like, how are you retired in your early 40s? Yep. And what was it that you did in the service for those years? Oh, um, so I served in the United States Army for um, about 26 years. Uh, I was a logistics officer, deployed five times to Afghanistan and Iraq. My husband was an Apache pilot. We met in the Army. Um, yeah, that was our whole life. So uh, now we're civilians, which feels mm -hmm. really weird. And you're still doing some things with the vets, is that correct? Oh yeah, that, that, you know, you can take the girl out of the army, you can't take the army out of the girl. And uh, when I retired, I knew I wanted to find some purpose, some impact. I really wanted to give back to the veteran community. So that is how I came up with Best Medicine Brigade and Hilaria. Basically two things, Best Medicine Brigade is a group of comedians where we tell our stories through comedy. Uh, it's a really great way to bridge the civilian military divide and to really um, show the other side of the narrative, which after the longest war for a country, there's so much talk about like the trauma, the PTSD, like the injuries, but there was a lot of funny that happened um, during service. I feel like those stories are overshadowed by the gloom and doom. Uh, so we get to share that side. And then the other hilarious was an effort to reduce suicide. Uh, both my husband and I lost a lot of our comrades to suicide and we just thought how do we fix this and so i wanted to use the talent that i had for comedy to help heal people in a really um, authentic and innovative way what we did learn is we moved a lot and so we purchased several homes in the course of our career you have the option to live usually on an installation or to purchase or rent off the installation for us we chose to do a little bit of both um, it just depended on the scenario, how long we were going to be there, um, what our needs were at the time, what the market was like. Um, so we certainly owned our fair share of, of homes and real estate. We purchased land um, just as an investment property at, I gosh, I forget when, but like somewhere early in our career with the intent to build on it and retire there, but that never happened. So, um, but yeah, I think we did, it's more of self-discovery and self-taught. Now, with the speed of information and all these different platforms and avenues and YouTube and all of this stuff, we do have that opportunity. But sometimes it just takes that one person, Robin, to say, hey, have you thought about this? And creates that little seed, planting that seed. And it's then it's, then it's your job to nurture or not, right? It's your job to, to say, hey, do, do I spend my time at the soccer game or do I have time to where maybe I could do it before the soccer game or something like that? Nurturing that curiosity is really important, but it has to be something where you see the that end goal aligns with your priorities, right? Why am I doing this? The why has to align. It made me think of something, I, I, I say it often, um, I have it right here in front of me. If you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. You've probably heard that before. This is one of those pieces where delayed gratification if i can put this into me now that gives to us so much more later i think there's also something to consider too like at my age or at our age you start to have like your parents are getting older um you start to think about like their plans and their wishes and so there's typically like some property or some things involved and you start to like think about your own plan. You're like, oh my goodness, what what are we gonna do with this? You know, what is is our will in order? What are our, so that's kind of where we are right now. We've got some things that we're working through, just both both of our parents, and then also our own plan for um, 
after we're gone from this world, which sounds kind right. of depressing. I feel like military people think about this a lot more than, than non-military people because we're so used to talking about like, what happens if I die? Yes, life. It's Not life. Funny, it's life. It? The, the idea of it, I mean, myself and my wife had went through this early on as well, too. I am not military, uh, but it's something that's super important if you're thinking about this and if, if unfortunately you've been through it, like, what is it like when somebody does pass? And what are the decisions that needed to be made prior to to make that Mm -hmm. uh, process easier for your loved ones. So you mentioned, you know, uh, the will thing, but setting up a trust that has the will, uh, that's so crucial and understand asking the hard questions, what happens if um, setting up these processes of if then scenarios. So, hey, when that happens, it's, it's always going to happen. It's going to happen um, yeah. military or not. It is life. We yes. are born and we die, right? And hopefully along that way, we become the person that that we've been designed to be uh, and along the way also helping others and building those meaningful relationships with people and setting us up for success all along, all the way.